I am Folsom Prison. At one time, they called me Bloody Folsom. <laughs> and I earned the name. I've been standing here in California since 1878. My own prisoners built me, shutting themselves off from the free world. Every block of my granite is cemented by their tears, their pain, and the blood of many men. This is a story from my rough, tough past. It happened not long after the turn of the century. At the time I tell about, I had within my walls a thousand dangerous men that other prisons couldn't hold. But I held them. If I couldn't break a man's spirit, I broke his bow. I kept many of them in a cell house that wasn't fit for animals, let alone men. Its cells were more like tombs, and their doors were made of solid iron, secured by bars that only dynamite could budge. Two men, and often more, were crowded into those airless crypts. They slept, when they could sleep, on mattresses alive with vermin. They froze on winter nights, and their bodies were drained of sweat in the breathless heat of summer. Every morning, while it was still dark, my guards made the rounds, turning out the inmate kitchen workers so they could cook the slop that was fed my prisoners under the name of breakfast. Is it any wonder that after a sleepless night, a man sometimes went berserk and fought the hated walls that shut him in? Knock it off, you! Let a guy get some sleep! Down, you wingding! This was a common thing in those old days. I had so little work for them to do. Idleness and brutal restraint is a combination that rots a man's mind. Every Sunday morning, a long line of prisoners waited before the gate which led to the office of the captain of the guard. These men had dared to break my rules. Rules no man could keep under such conditions and they were there to be sentenced to punishment. First in line was the man whose mind had cracked under the awful strain. His feet were touching the deadline, and every prisoner knew that it meant just that, that the convict who stepped across that line without being ordered to do so, invited hot lead from the rifles of the guards and the towers, trigger-happy morons who needed no second invitation. In every prison population, there is always a leader. And Chuck Daniels, doing a life term, was just that. My warden at that time was of the old school. In the language of the prison world, a con-hater. To him, convicts were brutes. And brute force was the only thing that would keep them in line. Pete Donovan. Pete Donovan! Close the gate. Well, Pete, you had a little trouble this morning. What have you got to say for yourself? Nothing. Destroying prison property is a serious offense. Haven't you got any explanation to offer? You try sleeping in one of them sweat boxes. According to regulations, I should put you in solitary. Well, go ahead. Trump 30 days on me. A concrete bed will be better than that stinking mattress I've been sleeping on. 10 days solitary. Wait a minute. Pete could do 10 days standing on his head. Getting temperamental again, eh? Mark him down for 30. It'll take that long to cool off a big boy like Pete. Get him out of here. Check Phyllis. I think 10 days is enough, Warden. 10 days? What do you think we're running here? A flop house for these guys? Phyllis, why did you start a fight with Matisse in the yard? I didn't start anything. The report says... The report's all wrong, Captain. What about it, Sergeant? All I know is Matisse's in the hospital. Somebody gave him a pretty good working over. Matisse says it was Phyllis. Any witnesses? None that would talk. It wasn't me, I tell you. You think I'm stupid? I just did 30 in the hole. I don't want to go back there. That's the trouble with this joint. You blink an eye and the roof falls in on you. Wait a minute. Who are you yelling at, Con? 
Give him another 30. That'll teach him some manners. Get out of here. Stop out of line. What's wrong, Chuck? I'll tell you later. Go to the other end of the yard and wait for me. See you over there. The students are sure nervous this morning. Yeah. Don't try it, Jeff. Call it off. Why? It looks bad. Why is Ricky standing up there watching us? And look at them bulls in 16. I got a hunch somebody tipped them off. Give it up, Jeff. It's too late now. We'll get another chance. I'm going. Well, not me. Take my advice, Jeff. Call it off. Anything wrong? No. Give the signal when I go through the gate. Jeff Redden? Redden! Shut that gate! They made a break for the captain's office. That gator will kill these guys. Get away from that gate. We're coming through. Fire! 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 I tell you, fire! Fire! You two are responsible for this. I'll take care of you personally. All right. Okay, boys, the game's over. What's the score? Three dead, four, maybe five. I had a bid to that party. Yeah, so did I. But I passed it up. When I go, I go alone. How are you going, boy? Well, you'll find out after I've gone. Doc Hayden just phoned. Captain Baxter died during the night. Two officers dead. Lacks discipline is the answer. Baxter hadn't been so soft, he'd be alive today. So we're clamping down the lid. As of now, all privileges are canceled. The men not assigned to jobs will be locked in their cells 24 hours a day. Stop the tobacco issue. Lights out in the cells the minute the men get back from supper. Sherman, tell the mess sergeant to cut the con's meals to the bone. No meat, no sugar, beans, three times a day. And close the canteen till further orders. Sergeant, you're acting captain of the guard. I'll recommend you to the board, make your promotion permanent. Thank you very much, sir. I want you to take the men who instigated this riot. They have uh, about three weeks before they come to trial. And give them six hours a day on the hooks. Right. Now, I'll talk to Jeffrey. Take the cuffs off him. Go ahead. 
Jeff isn't dangerous. Not now. Wait outside. Jeff, you're a bigger fool than I thought you were. Nobody ever escapes what they've done. Nobody. Six of you got through the gate. There were others who couldn't make it. Others who were all set to go. Who were they? Didn't your stool pigeon tell you that? Oh, he told us there was a break coming. But he couldn't tell us when or who'd be in on it. I'll make a deal with you. The name of the stool pigeon for the names of those who missed out. I know the name of the stool pigeon. Look, you are no hoodlum like the others. Why protect them? Officers have been killed. That means a death sentence. I can get your commutation. Yanowski was in on it, wasn't he? Daly? Tinker? Pardue? Daniels? You're not even warm, Warden. Not Daniels, your good friend? You wouldn't go without him. He didn't know anything about it. Neither did the others. You're wasting my time and your life, Jeff. Now, you know you're going to tell me. Sit down. <coughs> Don't you know hospitality when you see it? That was a mistake, Jeff. Now we're really going to have a Not Daniels? Not Daniels. Somebody knows who he is, or somebody will find out. Yeah, that'll be the end of him. The end of him? Yeah. But not the end of Ricky. Turning men against each other, tormenting them till they fight back and get shot down. We'll have him in our next till we get out. Get me? Out. I told you guys not to smoke in here. You know what we got stashed in this cell? Want to be carried out of here in a basket? Good morning. Good morning. What can I do for you? I'm Frazier, Sacramento Press. I want to see the warden. Well, he hadn't come back from lunch, but his house is right across the street. Why don't you step over and send your name in? Yeah, thanks. I will. Take this man over to the warden's house. Thank you. Warden Ricky? Yes? I'm Frazier, Jim Frazier, Sacramento Press. So? I'd, uh... I'd like a few minutes of your time, Warden. What for? Well, it's been reported in my paper that one of your inmates was so badly beaten by... by a prison officer that he's now paralyzed. Anything in it? 
No. I'll have to have more proof than that to kill this story. In other words, you don't believe me. And that's about it. All right, Mr. Frazier, come with me. Get in. Why do they have to search your car? How do we know but somebody stashed a gun under the hood? You'd better shake this guy down, too. He's a newspaper man. Yeah, I might have a typewriter taped to my skin. Okay. After you, Mr. Frazier. Thank you. What's the name of the man you had the report on? Reardon. Jeff Reardon. Number 16. Just a moment. What is this? Those are the men who started that riot a few weeks ago. How long have they been getting this treatment? Oh, about two weeks, I guess. Reardon's in here. What did he do? He was top man in the riot. Don't you think he ought to be in the hospital? Perhaps you're right. He should have reported Redden's condition to the captain's office. Phone the hospital and have them send a stretcher down right away. Any uh, other suggestions, Mr. Frazier? Show ourselves to the gate guard. What for? So they can see there's nobody in the car holding a gun on us. We lost a warden that way once. A good warden? Not bad. His warden's gone. It's only fair to warn you that the story I'm going to write will tell just exactly what I saw here today. Go ahead. Write it. But write this, too. Those men murdered Captain Baxter and the guard. They tried to use Sergeant Hart and me as hostages. And if they'd got away with it, we would have had our throats cut. What would you do in a case like that? Put them in the bridal suite and give them breakfast in bed? Okay. Drop in again, Mr. Frazier. Anytime. Thanks. Maybe I will. What do you want? Mr. Ricky, sir, the word's out that I tipped you off about, you know. Well? well you got to help me, sir. Get me away from the yard. 
You'll be all right. We'll protect you. I don't think you can. They'll kill me, Warden. They'll kill me. All right. If it worries you that much, I'll have you transferred to the ranch. Thank you, sir. Shall I have him transferred right away, Warden? No. Forget about it. Leave Murray in. Hello. Hello. I'll be glad to give you a lift if you're going my way. Well, uh... Now, don't misunderstand me. I mean a lift. It's awfully nice of you, but, uh... I'm going to the prison. Well, so am I. Come on, get it. My husband's in Folsom. Mm -hmm. What does he do? He works in the quarry. He's a convict. Oh, I see. What's his name? Red Pardue. Getting out soon. Well, that's good news. Oh, it is for me. It's tough going, bringing up a couple of kids without a father. Two kids? You? Mm -hmm. A boy and girl. You got children? Uh huh. You should have. Oh, I've got to get a wife first. <laughs> that would be better. They're such fun. What? Wives? No, kids. Well, here we are. Have a nice visit. We will. Thanks for the ride. How do you like that? Every time I come up here to see him, they tell me they got him in the hole. But if he's in the hole, how did you get in here? Just ask to see somebody else. I've got lots of friends living in this place. I'm mm, crazy about your kid. I'm the same way about you. You're not gonna ditch me. Never. Mm, if I could only... Hey, what's going on here? Have a heart, will you? We're on our honeymoon. Don't wear what you're wearing now. Get something simple, you understand? Okay, Chuck. Tell the people you rent from that your husband's in the hospital, lung trouble or something, and you need a place for him to get well in. The plastic was close to Folsom. Don't be stupid. That's just the first stop. I'll tell you what, Molly. Yes, Joe? Send me some yarn. I'm learning how to knit. The way things happen, Jamie. There I was, all set to go with that mob. I told you it was crazy. A couple of weeks later, I get a letter from the board telling me they've granted my parole. You could be dead now. You should thank God on your knees. I did. Just think, Janie. Six more months and I'll be coming home. I haven't been able to think of anything else since I got your letter. You told the kids? Of course. Jenny's too young to understand. She hardly knows me. But the boy... What did he say? Oh, what all kids say when they're glad. He ain't ashamed of my con? He boasts about it, Red. Oh, now, look, that's bad. I know. You say he's crazy about football. Okay. You tell him life's just like that. That you can't play the game without the rules. And if you break the rules, you've got to pay the penalty. Tell him a thief's not only a snide player, but he's a chump who gets at the neck every time. And tell him I love him. I love them both. Well, I see you've heard the bad news. Yeah, I hear some guys moving into Baxter's quarters. They also tell me he's going to be the new captain of the guard. That's right. Well, what happens to me? What about my promotion? Well, I thought I could get the board to leave things as they are. Put the new man in your old spot. I even talked to him on the phone. No dice. I know how you feel, Cliff. But I'm not happy either. After all the years I've put in here, it makes me feel like a sap. I know, I know. But listen to what the board wrote to me. Get this. You've been working too hard, Ben, and you're tired. Your staff has let you down. What you need in Folsom is a transfusion. New blood, young blood. So we're sending Mark Benson as your new captain of the guard. New blood, young blood. What do they think I am, old? Mark Benson, didn't he used to work at Quentin? Yeah, he was a sergeant, university guy. Later, they made him superintendent of road camps. I met him a couple of times, heard him sound off once at a, 
meeting of the prison association. Kearns are mentally sick, early influences, society's to blame, you know that line. Yeah, I know. What are we supposed to do, give him a shot in the arm? You know what he wants to use on Kearns? No, what? Psychology. No, kidding. Yeah. You know what that is? Well, it's, uh... Here. The science which treats of the mind of man in any of its aspects. Ah. Systematic knowledge and investigation of the phenomena of consciousness and behavior. Well, he better not try any of that stuff in here. Oh, I want him to try it. I'm going to give him all the rope he needs and then watch him hang himself. Yeah? Mr. Benson is here, Warden. Oh, come in, come in. Hi, Mark. Welcome to Folsom. Thank you, Warden. It's going to be a pleasure to work with you. You've met Captain uh, Sergeant Hart. No, I haven't, but I've heard about him. I'm going to need a lot of help from you, Sergeant. That's what I'm here for. Of course, it'll take me a few days to orient myself. You know, this is a pretty big reservation. Yes, it is. So take all the time you want. Now that we've got new blood in here, I'm going to take it easy. You know your job, so I'm giving you a free hand. Folsom means maximum security, and we're stuck with it. Outside of that, I'll welcome any suggestions you have to offer. Well, that's very kind of you, Warden. I really hadn't expected that. I know. I've got a tough reputation. But my bark is worse than my bite. Hey, Cliff? <laughs> that's right, Warden. You've been here before? Just once. Hart will show you around. Sure. I know we're going to get along fine together. Just fine. Thank you, Warden. See you later. This is the guard relief, the day shift, just going on duty. Boys, I want you to meet Mr. Benson, the new captain. Uh, oh, yeah. Hello, Captain. That's all, fellas. Well, the Folsom guard line hasn't changed much since I saw it last. Any high school men among them? Mm, yeah, a couple, I guess. Mm, it's tough to get good men. Yeah, they're only $60 a month in their keep. You can't buy much for that kind of dough. Let's go see the canning plant first, huh? Here's a character you should know. Roof, meet the new captain. Roof Mosier, the oldest con in the pen. Yep, I've been here since 1895. He was eligible for parole 13 years before he applied for it. And then when he got it, he didn't want to leave. Why not, Roof? Well, you see, Captain, I wanted to take my dog Jojo with me. I got the warden's permission to take him, and everything went fine until we got the front gate. Then he wouldn't move. Nothing I could do would make him stir his stumps. So I figured, if Jojo didn't like it outside, maybe I wouldn't like it neither. No, sir. Sergeant, do you permit dogs in here? No, Jojo's the only one. He's a good ratter. The joint's full of rats. We manufacture and repair all the shoes we use in the place. Hello, Leo. How's it going? Okay, sir. Meet Mr. Benson, new captain of the yard. Hi. How old are you, Leo? Twenty, Captain. He's doing life, murder first. Tell him how it happened, Leo. I killed my wife. She was 18. Five bullets. For every bullet, I quoted a word from the marriage service. Until death do us part. Funny thing about it, she didn't do what he thought she did. He knows that, I suppose. <laughs> he does now.
Joseph Klein. Sure is. My name is Borges. Mine's Benson. I'm the new captain of the guard. Glad to know you, sir. Get a good view of the yard from here. Well, I see some old friends of mine from the Sierra Road Camp. Yeah, there's Hop Grand and Whitey McCain. Hop's got rabbit blood in him, always taking it on the lamb. That's how come he finally landed in here. That's the noon call for mess. How much are we allowed per day to feed the inmates? 14 cents per man. Ah, that's less than five cents a meal, isn't it? That's right. What kind of food can be bought for that money? <laughs> Beans. Beans for breakfast, dinner, and supper. Yeah. to crash out of this joint and get some decent chow for a change. Yeah, me too. Warden's orders. That's bad for morale. I didn't like the looks of the food I saw on those tables either. I don't think the cons like the looks of it. Kinda hot, ain't it? Yeah. Can I get you guys some water? We'll get our own water. Yeah. He's right on time. Tate said we could expect him through here about 10.30. Well, watch yourselves now. This is it, stool pigeon. Stay away from you guys, stay away. <laughs> on a job. Come on, let's go. Who was he, Sergeant? Stool pigeon. That was no accident, Sergeant. Should we go back? See everything? I saw an inmate killed, one. One of the men on the track gang. He fell into the mill race and was swept over the dam. Who was it? Gebhardt. Oh. An accident? Yes, Warden. It was an accident. Here's his file card. Evans, bring in your book. Oh, one, three, four, two. Carl Gebhardt. Hmm. The stool pigeon. They come and go. Uh, why are this man's wife? Uh, regret to inform you, uh, your husband died as of... Uh, correction. Your husband died accidentally as of this date. He has uh, two dollars on the prison books. Uh, please inform us what you wish done with his body. Sign my name, that's all. Yes, Warren. Well, Benson? What do you think of Fawcett? It's quite a place, Warden.
No, no, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. Okay, I'll take care of myself. Yeah, I'll call you later on it. Right. Goodbye. Like your new office? Close to the yard. Well, you picked it. Say, you remember that wire we sent to the wife of the con who was killed down by the dam, the one with the two dollars on the prison books? Here's her answer. You keep the body, send me the two dollars. Warden, I sent you a list of changes the other day that I wanted to make. Well, why don't you make them? Well, I was waiting for your okay. I told you I was giving you a free hand. What more do you want? Well, that's fine. Or there's one other thing. What about those men being punished in the hole? What about them? Well, they'll be coming up for trial in a few weeks. They'll all get the death sentence. Don't you think that's punishment enough? Look, Captain, that's one department I want you to keep your hands off. Is that clear? It's quite clear. OK. Forget it. What's for breakfast this morning? Same old slop. Bed, mice, skim, milk, and black coffee. Uh. You want to see us, Captain? Yes, I did. Sergeant, how can prisoners respect men who have no respect for their own appearance? From now on, the officers of the guard line will report for duty in uniforms that are at least clean. And they'll conduct themselves like officers. Not like thugs. Yes, sir. Stuart, if a pure food inspector was shown through the prison canning plant, he'd have apoplexy. The place reeks of filth. And as for discipline, the workers are either bullied by the guards or left to do as they please. The same thing applies to all the shops. Clean them up. Yes, sir. Also, I want that silent sign taken out of the mess hall. Let the men talk while they eat. And as up to today, we're taking beans off the prison menu. How can you run a prison without beans? Beans are good, wholesome food. Well, they might be if they weren't spoiled. According to the record, 10 barrels of rejected food, mostly beans, were thrown to the ranch hogs last week. Is that right, Stuart? Yes, sir. But what am I going to feed them if I can't feed them beans? Feed them the ranch hogs. Then they'll get the beans in a more palatable form. Don't you ever feed meat to the inmates? Sometimes. Make it three times a week. What do they get for dessert? Each man gets a pint of ice cream every 4th of July. Give them a pint every Sunday. We've got a dairy herd on the ranch. Put the milk to work. That's all, Stuart. Oh, and don't forget. Meat for dinner. Meat. Will that be all, Mr. Benson? That's all, son. so funny. I've been reading your file card. That's quite a score, Chuck. You've crashed the walls of more jailhouses than any man in the country. What would you do if you were serving a life sentence? Oh, I'm afraid my answer might incriminate me. Besides, I'm on the opposing team. How do you like it in here? Not so good. The joint's full of suspicious characters. You're due to go out pretty soon, aren't you, Red? 127 days, 12 hours, 31 minutes, 11 seconds. You can see he hasn't given it much thought. I see by your file card you were a licensed dynamite man outside. That's right. 
Well, I've got a friend in Redwood City in the lumber business. I think I can get you a job with him. Come in and see me in a couple of days, will you? Thanks, Captain. I will. So long, fellas. Not a bad guy. Your move. Say, Mr. Benson. Yes, Tinker? Uh, that's Tinker, not Stinker. Well, that's what I said. Oh, uh, I'd like to talk to you about getting out of here. All right. You know, I'm, I'm not a confirmed criminal like the rest of the guys in here. I should be on the outside. Maybe you're right at that, Tinker. You'd probably do more good for the law outside than you would inside. <laughs> yeah, that's what I've been trying to tell everybody. I'll bet you could keep at least 10 policemen working all the time. Yeah. <laughs> All men call for the quarry detail answer to your names. McCain. Yeah. Rand. Yeah. Masters. Yeah. White. Here. Pardue. Yeah. Tinker. Tinker. Here. Present. Here, here, here I am. Got a light? No. Ferretti. Yeah. Daniels. Yeah. White. Here. Yanoski. Here. Masonic. Yeah. Daly. Here. Sweet. Here. Montgomery. Here. Let's go. Okay. Chuck and I'll go ahead with the wire. You fellas follow those cases. Okay, here's yours, Tinker. Walk easy, Tinker. What's the setup here? Ah, uh, Pardue's top powder man. That was the job on the outside. We helped him. Come on. Say, Nick. What's in this? Nitro. What's that? Dynamite. Dynamite? Wait. Hey, hey, watch out for flash! Oh. Hey, if anything happens to me, I'm gonna quit this job. What do you want? This is 60% dynamite, Sarge. If we use this stuff, it'll shatter the rock. The case is marked 40. Must have used the wrong stencil. We've got three other cases. They're all the same, 60. The powder company doesn't deliver till tomorrow. Can't you borrow some in town? Yeah, we might. Put the cover back on that case, Chuck. While you're about it, you better get some number six and number eight detonator caps. We're running short. OK. I'll have to send you in with the pickup truck to handle the stuff. Tinker, Freddy, get back to your drilling. You heard what he said? Yeah, yeah, I heard him. Hey, where are you going? I got a date with a guy named Freddy. Pardue's a licensed dynamite man, Captain. It's safer to let him handle it. Yes, sir, I have a guard I can spare. You go with him, Michaels. Get the pickup truck at the garage. Here's an order for the keys. Stop at the captain's office on your way out and pick up a pass for Pardue. I'll phone. The stuff will be ready by the time you reach town. Right. bound for? Down to village. All right. Okay. I want to phone the wife, see if she wants anything in town.
Cover that truck. Okay, Red, let's go. Hold it, Red. Get away from that. What's the matter, Red? I got word to shake this down again. All right, all right. Don't get nervous, screw. I'm getting out. I know you are. You can kiss that parole goodbye, Red. I didn't know anything about it. I'll bet he didn't. He was driving the truck, wasn't he? Come on, inside, both of you. I'd have done the same thing in your place. We gotta face it, Red. There are no secrets in a prison. Even though the guards are the only ones that know what happened, the inmates are liable to figure out that you... Turn stool pigeon? Oh, I wouldn't put it that way. You're not a cop. Well, that's just what I'm getting at. Well, glad to see one of you cons has a brain on his head. This note you sent up to the tower guy was one for the book. Your mind really worked fast, didn't it, Brent? It had to, Warden. <laughs> I wonder what would happen if I posted this on the bulletin board out in the yard. They'd turn on you like a pack of wolves. Now, but you don't need to worry. I've told everybody who knows about it to keep their mouths shut. I think we all read a vote of thanks. Sure, sure, and I appreciate it. Well, Michael's waiting for you in the truck. You go on into town, get your dynamite, and go right back to your job as if nothing had happened. Yes, sir. You're not going to send him back to the yard, are you? Back to his old job? Why not? The cons don't know anything about this. Well, they'll find out soon enough. Freddy was found in the truck. They'll have to suspect Red. Oh? Let me tell you something. The minute I move Red out of his regular spot, every con and false oh, no, he turned Freddy in. You didn't think of that, did you? You know why? Because that's something you learn from experience, not from books on psychology. He's going out in a few months. We owe him protection. I need him in the quarry. What do you want me to do, play nursemaid to the guy? I still think you're risking his life. And I say I'm still warden here. You seem to forget that once in a while. It's a bad habit, Mr. Benson. Hey, Pete, I've been looking for you. Where you been? To school. Can I carry your books? <laughs> What'd you study today? Home economics. It's all about marriage. That's what you ought to do, get married. Me? Give up my freedom? You're crazy. <laughs> transferred her in. Hey, that's neat. The air from the vent makes it go round. What do you know? What do you got it for? Something to look at when I'm trying to sleep. What do you hold up in here for, Red? I don't feel right. You know what day this is? The Placerville Tigers are playing our team this afternoon. You ought to be sitting on top of the world with the break you got the other day. You know, if Freddy had made it, he'd have dropped the axe on you. What's the matter with you, anyway? Nothing. You sure? I turned Freddy in. What are you talking about? I turned him in. I spotted him behind the seat in the cab. I didn't know what to do, Chuck. I thought of my parole. My wife and kids. I had to do it. Does Freddy know? No. Who does? Ricky Benson. Half a dozen guards. You. Freddy. 
already knew that if he did make it, you'd take the rap. That, that's like sneaking up behind a guy in the dark and, and sticking a knife in his back. The other cons won't see it that way. No, they believe what they read about themselves, that cons don't talk. 75% of the prisoners in every stir I've ever been in squeal on each other all the time. That's the code of the underworld. Try to make them believe that. To them, I'll be a stool pigeon. But not to me, Red. You're the kind of a guy I'd tie to every time. Didn't I take you in on this, on this break I've been planning for years? You're the first guy I told about it. If it wasn't for your parole, you'd be going with us when we go. Now, come on, let's go out and watch that game. Hey, Jennings, look what you drew. Well, Tinker, you ain't been down here in a long time. Have you missed me? They sent him down to do that plumbing job you've been griping about. And it's about time. How would this place ever operate without my guiding hand? Yeah, I get it now. Call me when you're through with him. Right. Number nine, Pinker. Got a leaky waste trap in this one. Can you fix it? Guy can pick a lock and fix most anything. See if you can pick that one. Sing out when you're finished. How long are we going to keep you down here? We'll be lucky if I ever get out of here. Nick, how come you got caught? Pardu turned me in. Pardu? No kidding. I didn't know anything about it till a couple of days ago. Part two. Why, that don't seem possible. I didn't think he knew I was in a truck. He must have got wise. See, I got a friend in the captain's office. One of the con clerks. Finally figured out a way to tip me off. Want me to spread the word in the yard? That'd fix him good. No, uh, no. Daniels would cover up for him. Yeah, I guess he would at that. Look, Tinker, I've got close to 300 on the prison books. You stop Pardue from going out and it's yours. I haven't sent any way you say. You know I've got good connections outside. They can't help me because I'm in on murder first. They could spring you out on the parole. It'd be a cinch. Accidents happen all the time. What about it, Tinker? What about it? Hey, Jennings, the job's done. Let me out of here. 300 bucks, Tinker. And a surefire rain check for you. You'll have to stand still, Red, if you expect me to get this thing right. You know what this means, don't you? I do. You'll be going out tomorrow. But don't worry. I'll have it ready for you. It means my wife is going to see me for the first time in five years without a prison uniform. She's coming up to get me. What's the matter? Don't you think you can find the way home? She'll wear a new dress, blue like her eyes. She'll straighten my tie and say, Red, you big lug. And then she won't be able to talk. And neither will I. Red, Noonan wants you over in the quarry. Come on. I'm coming. My last job before I sign out. Right. Tell the sides are already to blast. She's all wide except this hole. Right. Everybody stand! 
and clear. All clear? All clear! Keep your head down. Why, a piece of rock got me. I told you to keep your head down. Dopey here got hit. He had to see the fireworks. Go tell Officer Brock to take him to the doctor. How did it go? Not so good. One side didn't blow at all. Must be a break in the cable. It's old stuff. I'll find it. It's a break, all right, Sarge. Yeah. Looks like we got a jinx on this job. Hurry it up, Red. on the wire. Why didn't you stop him? I started to. He gave it another yank and it flipped over and made contact. I tried to grab it, but it was too late. He did it himself. I couldn't help it. I never had no trouble with Red. I was no friend of Ferretti's either. I... So you know about that, huh? Okay, Tinker. Okay. Come in. This is Purdue, Mr. Benson. I remember you. You gave me a ride to the prison, didn't you? That's right. This isn't my office, Mrs. Purdue, but I had you brought here so we wouldn't be disturbed. It's about your husband, Red. Won't you sit down? What's the matter, Captain Benson? Has Red done something wrong? You're not keeping him here any longer, are you? Is he hurt? Tell me. I'm going to tell you, Mrs. Perdue. I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. Well, Benson, what's new? I've just finished telling Red Perdue's wife that he's going out today. What's that? In a box. Oh, I see. How did she take it? In a way you wouldn't understand. You see, she loved him. You told her it was an accident, of course. I told her it was murder. What do you mean, murder? We couldn't prove that in a thousand years. I told her you killed him, Warden. You wouldn't dare say that. When you sent that man back to the yard, you knew that sooner or later the men inside would find out what had happened. That was a chance he had to take. The chance you made him take. To your twisted mind, a convicted man is no longer human. He's a thing to be kicked around, to be thrown away. That's how you show your courage. By stepping on men who can't strike back. Why, you phony reformer. You're all worked up, Captain, or you wouldn't say such things. I face these cons, thieves, murderers, alone, unarmed. That's why they have respect for me. They hate you, Ricky. They despise you. 
maybe, but not to my face. I had you figured right, Benson. Your psychology is just another name for weakness. It takes guts to run a prison. No, it takes brains. Brains and understanding. And all you have is beef. You talk that way to me. Listen, I got news for you. From now on, I run this prison my way. That's the only way you understand. There's a change coming. A big change. Only you're too blind to see it. Yeah? There are men in this country who are making a science of phenology. Not weak men. Strong men. Strong because they're right, Ricky. And before long, the prisons of this state will be in their hands. Tell that to the board of directors. They know it. And they know that you and your kind are on the way out. You're dated, Ricky. You're a back number. You have no fear of thieves and murderers because you think the way they do. You're as much a psychopathic case as any man in here. <coughs> and you're making the same blunders every dictator made since time began. Study the records. And you'll see they all went down in disaster. Give me Sergeant Hart. Hart speaking. Hello, Hart. The warden speaking. Mr. Benson has just resigned. I want you to take his place. And I want you to revoke every change made by Benson while he was captain. From now on, the rule is rigid discipline. And the tougher, the better. That's all for now. <laughs> to be taking it all right, don't they? What else can they do but take it? I'll be late for dinner. You're in charge, Sergeant. You mean captain, don't you? Yeah, captain. Keep your eyes open. Right. This might be the time for it. Really? Pass the word on to McCain and Rand as we go out. They know what to do. Bigfoot.
Collins calling from the gun gallery in number one. Everything's quiet. that stick. You crazy, Daniel? I said drop it. That's it. I get on back to 197. Come on. matter, Tinker? Getting nervous? Freddy and I want to be on it. Let us out of here, will you? Take it easy. We'll get around to you, boys. Jonathan Depp. Where's the hot stuff? We got it. Here. Smell that screw. Get on the phone. Get Mark. Well, I say to him. Exactly what I tell you to and nothing else. Give me Captain Hart's office. Hart? 
speaking. This is Castle, Mr. Hart. I'm in the old block. There's something wrong with the gun guy, Collins. Yeah? What's the matter with him? I don't know. He's got a stroke. Tell him to get over here. Maybe he's got a stroke. You better get over here. Okay. He's on his way. He's got the key to the door that connects this cell block with the administration building. That's the way we're going out. Now, come on. We'll meet him there. You two, come on. to the door to the administration building. You're out of luck, Daniels. I haven't got it. Where is it? Warden has it. Where's he? He's home, having dinner. Good. We'll go call him up. <laughs> call Ricky and tell him you need that key. Tell him to send it to cell block one. But go on! Get out. Hart speaking. Connect me with the warden's home. What do you want, Bong? Mr. Hart's on the phone, warden. The man can't even get his dinner in peace. Hello, Cliff. What do you want? I'm an old cell block number one, warden. There's a break going on here. The cons have got guns. Hello. Operator! Operator! This is the warden speaking. There's a break going on in block number one. Turn in the alarm. Tell him to keep that search light on cell house number one. Yes, sir. Give me tower 18. What are you doing? I came to help you if I can. I don't need your help. I can thank you for what's happening here tonight. Listen, Ricky, I understand these men that are leading the riot. Let me go to the cell block and let me talk. You want to get killed? No, I believe they'll listen. No, that's out. They dissemble the militia. Why should I? For the effect on the rioters. Once they see the troops, they know they're beaten. I've never asked for any help yet. But you'll save lives. You haven't got enough men to handle this. I know what I'm doing, and I don't want your advice. Warden, they're sending a man out under a white flag. He's talking to one of the screws. Now they're taking him to the captain's office. nothing to do with this. They opened my cell and told me to bring you a message. That's all I know. How'd you get out? Through the gun gallery. How'd you get up there? They got a rope. They told me to tell you, if you don't make a deal with them, they, they're going to start killing the guards one at a time. Yeah? They want you to give them the key that opens the door to the administration building. They want you to let them out the front gate. How many? Well, there's six of them. <laughs> Once the way is clear, they'll take a couple of hundred with them. Told me to tell you, if I ain't back in ten minutes, they're going to start killing guards anyhow. Very fair offer, eh, Mr. Benson? Just about what I expect. If you don't send him back, they'll kill those men. Don't worry. I'm sending him back. He's coming back. You stay here, Leo. Keep your eyes open. Come on, you two. The guy we sent to the wardens is on his way back. You stick here and keep this door covered.
that you, Ed? Yeah. What's the warden's answer? I got it right here. That's the way they want it. All right, they'll get it. Come on. Stop shooting. What does that mean? We'll find out. Keep that opening covered. They cut the lights. Take it easy. Daniels! Hold it. I want to talk to you. It's Benson. What do you want? The warden? You're too late. He's dead. You're going to surrender. What for? So you can string us all up? You've committed murder, Daniels. That's what you call it. If this thing goes on, we'll be forced to attack the cell house with explosives. Every man in there will die. I want you to send out Sergeant Hart and the guard you're holding. Also, the men who are still locked in their cells. Then you ringleaders must come out alone, unarmed and with your hands over your head. I'm offering you your only chance, Daniels. You've got five minutes. Look who's out there. One minute. Might as well face it. Turn all those guys loose in the cell blocks. with the others, ain't you? Yes, Tinker, we're sending you out. The both of you. Sending you out just like you sent out Red Pardue. 
Four minutes. You're ready to duck, you guys? Don't, no, not this time. Don't, Nick, that's dynamite! There you have a story from my notorious past. Today, the picture is an entirely different one. Through the years that followed, my board of directors gave me modern new buildings to house my growing population. But what is more important, they gave me a change of heart. Administrators who were merciful as well as just. Today, under the direction of an enlightened phonologist, my guards are chosen by competitive examination and without political interference. My walls are still impregnable. But the prisoners inside them are treated as individuals for what they are and for what ails them. I am still overcrowded. There is still the evil of two men in a cell, but that will be corrected by legislation. In my prison hospital, you will find every modern appliance, every expert medical care. To correct a man's thinking, you must keep his body fit. And by the same token, you must occupy his mind. Here, where 11 million license plates were turned out this year, inmates are paid a nominal wage and are given a chance to regain their self-respect. I can't keep all the men you send to me. The great majority will one day be sent out on parole. Their care, their rehabilitation is your problem as well as mine. You can't lock them up and forget them. Sooner or later, one of them may be your next door neighbor. If they send you to me now, I'll be just. I'll be humane. But don't get me wrong. I'm no pushover. You will still find that there is no substitute for freedom. <laughs>